What's up everybody? This is Gray Man here. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully well. So today we're going to be looking at eight ways to store food without a refrigerator. Uh, something uh, I love doing videos like this because I love reading in the comments down below of other ways that people uh, use these kind of uh, methods to store foods and also things that I may miss uh, and things that other people may use in the same instance of, of storing their own foods uh, and you know their produce, their vegetables, their meats. Uh, their eggs and so on and so forth so really looking forward to uh, hearing what you guys have to say down in the comments so uh, love that interaction and uh, also uh, these eight ways that I'm going to be going over uh, I am not a full-blown expert in these ways by no means uh, so what I go over please do your research uh, and learn and practice these methods uh, until you become really good at it because I'm in some of these methods that I'm going to be going over I am practicing and learning myself uh, even for the first time this year uh, so that being said, it's never too late to learn. Um, one book that I have been using that I want to share with you guys, and uh, I'll put it up. Let me see here. We'll put it. Uh, where where, where are we want to put it out here, Gray? We'll uh, we'll put it right here. <laughs> we'll put it right here somewhere. We'll put the book right here. Uh, this is uh, one of the books that I'm using. Uh, if some of you guys may you know may not need a book like this, but if you do need a book, uh, if you want to know where I got it from, I'll throw down a little link down in the description. You know, a little link to that book. I think it runs about 15 bucks uh, over on Amazon or whatnot, but I've been reading that book to help me learn some of the ways of, you know, storing foods without, you know, let's say refrigeration and whatnot. So uh, other than that, uh, I think that's about it. We can dive into this here now. And uh, the first one, uh, and you know, some of this stuff can maybe depend on where you live, uh, but uh, from my understanding, I've seen people do some interesting things with all these different options. All right, so enough rambling on, Gray, let's get right to it, right? Uh, the first one is going to be root cellars. Uh, and so by definition, a root cellar is a storage area that uses the natural cooling properties of the earth. Um, people, I've seen people do some really intriguing things with root cellars, even uh, even here in Florida. I don't know how they pull it off, but the, down below, the, the deeper you go, the cooler it gets. Uh, I've seen some pretty intriguing uh, root cellars myself. I've seen people store a lot of stuff when I lived up north. Uh, you know, my mom, she had a root cellar uh, where she stored a lot of her canning goods and stuff like that. Uh, here it says you can attach your root cellar to your home or build one in a separate area. Aim to maintain a high humidity, about 80%, and temperatures just above freezing, around 34 degrees. Uh, for the storage of potatoes, onions, carrots, leeks, radishes, beets, turnips, winter squash, cabbage, and jarred preserves, as well as other things as well. Uh, one thing that it did note on the research that I did in regards to root cellars, because I don't have one myself, uh, it says use wire or wooden storage bins uh, that allow air to circulate around your clean, dry veggies. You can also gather bunches of onions and carrots together by their tops and uh, hang them in a cellar, uh, you know, from the cellar roof or the rafters or whatever you want to call that. And another option is to spread fruits and vegetables out on a shelf or a bench uh, down in the root cellar as well. So there's just some basics uh, with the root cellar. Uh, some of you folks may have root cellars, and you can kind of drop down, like I said in the comments, so your experience with root cellars and what you store down there if you'd like. Um, I would would love to have a root cellar, but I would have to do a lot more research here down in Florida, uh, being that where I'm located, the water table is very high. Uh, we're below sea level, so it makes it a little bit more intriguing, to say the least. But I have learned some things with water and stuff like that, but we're not getting into that. We're going to keep on track and stay on track with these eight things here. Um, but anyways, like I said, with each topic, like number one is root cellars. Uh, and if you're intrigued in a root cellar, go do some research on a root cellar or check out that book or check out another book that you might find that's specific on root cellars and learn and practice in building one and using one. You know what I mean? It's only beneficial to you. Number two, and this is something I'm starting this year. It should be part intriguing. You guys will be watching me uh, jump into this whole thing. But number two is canning. Uh, canning offers a shelf life of roughly about one to five years, and depending on what you can, uh, sometimes even longer, from my understanding. Uh, Mark over at Rolling Homestead and Zane and some of the other folks uh, that I associate with on YouTube are teaching me a lot of information about canning. Uh, I've also watched Ghost's videos and several others out there uh, that do the canning parties and whatnot. Uh, Rudy over at Alaska Prepper. There's a lot of folks out there that you can go check out when it comes to canning. Uh, and there are many, many canning methods. Uh, when it comes to that, like I said, I'm far from the expert when it comes to that topic, but uh, we'll be diving into that this year as we're going to be canning some of the vegetables and things out of our garden. Uh, I'm also going to be canning some chicken and things like that. I'm going to be using the Presto uh, cooker. Uh, it's kind of like that entry level, but everybody says it's pretty decent, so that's what I'm going to be using myself. All right, moving on to number three, drying. 
Uh, another technique that I'll be using this year uh, for some peppers and stuff like that that I have, you know, some Thai chili peppers that are growing well in the garden. If you watched that one video, I did kind of cruise over those uh, not too long ago. Uh, but another way to preserve fruits and vegetables is by drying them. Uh, dried foods retain more of their nutrients than foods preserved by other natural methods, which, which truly intrigued me because the more nutrients, the better, right? Another idea is to string a hole or chop produce, then hang them, uh, you know, by strings up to dry. You know, I've seen over, you know, like, again, Mark, he's hanging them in his uh, doorways and stuff like that. Some people hang them down in the cellars. Uh, I've seen that things like, you know, people hang stuff dry all the time. I've learned that certain things you use paper bags uh, and stuff like that. But it says uh, you can, uh, you know, string whole or chopped uh, produce and then hang them up to dry. You can also dry foods in a food, food dehydrator oven or microwave or in your vehicle or in the back of your vehicle on a sunny day you can take a tray uh, some people say you might want to lay some you know some uh, some wax paper or some parchment paper down there and put the tray out if you have a nice hot bright you know sun out there you know with not too much humidity but here in Florida the humidity is nasty but from my understanding the way the sun works and the reflectiveness of it we could still dry some things that are that are not going to be super of a big issue because the sun is very potent the rays are nasty out here uh, but they can, like I said, they can help on the drying process. You guys know I have a dehydrator. Uh, I'm going to be dumping that dehydrator and buying a way better dehydrator um, because it's going to make my life a little bit easier. Kind of, you know, be able to set some numbers, you know, right around 95 degrees, you know, four to six hours, depending on the vegetables and kind of go from there. Uh, but uh, I've also people seen people use the food, uh, the oven. You know, I watched how uh, I watched someone uh, dry Cuban oregano uh, uh, with his oven, and uh, it was pretty intriguing how he did that. Um, and like I said, everything you know, you have to, everything takes specific steps to do certain things in the drying process. Uh, but you know, be sure that you know once you dry these foods, you know you want to put them in an airtight container, as if not, they will deteriorate rapidly. Uh, so if you put all that work into it, you know what I mean. You want to just make sure they're stored properly in a nice airtight container. All right, moving on to number four, or no, number yeah, number four. No, yeah. Uh oh, I think I skipped a number. And I may only have seven items. Woo, Gray, you made a mistake, man. <laughs> Anyways, I see that I did make a mistake, so we may only have, we'll see here. We'll, we'll, we're going to run with it, right? Oh, boy. Anyways, number four is fermenting. Uh, fermentation is a food preservation method used by, uses microorganisms, uh, including bacteria or yeast, uh, to convert carbohydrates to alcohol and organic acids. Our fermented foods are filled with beneficial bacteria, uh, that help uh, the good bacteria thrive in a digestive system, uh, helping you have the proper balance of gut flora. And, um, you know, uh, let me see. Let's say, uh, what's the word? Um, there's a, it's a sauerkraut, you know what I mean? Like that that, that purple sauerkraut. There's, there's, you know, you can take cabbage and ferment it and whatnot like that. I don't know. I, I just, things pop in my head when people have told me some things. And like sauerkraut, I think, is one of the best uh, for gut flora and all the probiotics and stuff that it has in there. Uh, but fermenting, fermenting is, like I said, another uh, way uh, to store food without a refrigerator. And uh, <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to go with it, man. I'm just going to go with and skip over that one. And we're going to go to number six. Number six should be something commonplace with a lot of you folks out there, specifically, you know, hunters, homesteaders, and stuff like that, is smoking. Uh, smoking is a process of preserving food that usually uh, is usually like meat and fish uh, by exposing it to smoke using a wood-burning fire. Uh, typically, uh, typically combined, uh, you know, with salt, uh, you know, curing salt. Some people call it curing salt, uh, you know, or, you know, dry rubs, and then basically it involves, you know, hanging meats and placing it on racks in a chamber that contains smoke. Uh, hot smoking is done, you know, in the smokehouse over a short period of time, and then for you folks that might do this in a, a different way, they use uh, it's called cold smoking, and you do that over a smoldering fire, and it can take anywhere from roughly 12 to 24 hours to do so. Uh, so you have the hot smoking and the cold smoking uh, ways to do smoking these meats or fish and whatnot. And if you guys have seen some of the survival shows, you know, let's say like Naked and Afraid or Alone, uh, they use this kind of uh, method uh, in those videos as well, and you guys could have seen that. But there's some people that do it on YouTube. I'm pretty sure there's lots of videos out there, so go check those videos out and uh, learn something. You know what I mean? It's good to learn something every day and, uh, you know, get that brain uh, motivation going and just digesting more stuff, man. Digest some more stuff while you can. All right, now number seven uh, is something that I uh, I picked this one out myself because I'm I love eggs. 
Uh, I don't know how many of you guys out there love eggs. Uh, you know, we are probably going to be diving into some sort of chicken coop, and I think, was it Chief Prepper? And some, someone uh, emailed me or, or dropped a comment in the last video and explained me their whole situation with hens and stuff like that. Uh, plus, I've had a lot of information with other folks in regards to uh, chickens, especially Gardner Josh. It's helped me out as well, and uh, you know, Market Rolling Homestead as well. So those are just a few people that you guys can check out when it comes to uh, chickens. But anyways, uh, the main thing here is number seven, mineral oil. Uh, it's uh, it's a technique used to preserve eggs. So well, and I, I just find it truly intriguing. You know, when I first found out about this months and months and months ago, because I didn't know, I didn't know uh, that you can, uh, you know, from the eggs that you get, because when you get eggs from the store, uh, you put them in the refrigerator, they have a certain expiration date, and then it's game over, you know what I mean? Uh, so it says, uh, if you have, you know, hens and whatnot, it says, don't wash your eggs after collecting them, uh, as it takes away the protective bloom present over the eggs that can prevent bacteria from getting inside the shell. Instead, gently wipe the eggs down with a towel, then coat them with mineral oil. Uh, make sure you coat the entire surface of the egg shell, um, you might, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, you can you can take a little rag, you can wipe it all over with mineral oil. Uh, I've seen people actually have a little, like, uh, you know how you have the Easter egg and you have the bowls, you can dip them. I've seen people dip them in uh, mineral oil, you know what I mean, and then kind of you know, tap them off and then set them. Uh, I guess whatever works for you, you know. Um, but anyways, uh, it says gently set the eggs in an egg carton. Uh, repeat with your other eggs and store their carton at normal room temperature outside of direct sunlight just with pretty much anything you don't ever want direct sunlight on things unless you're drying something right uh, so you wanna uh, once a week for about a month you wanna flitch, flip each egg over uh, in the carton and uh, this does not need to be repeated after the first month so you know for the first week uh, you just kinda wanna flip the eggs back and forth and so on and so forth uh, in the carton that you put them in if you have them in like say an egg carton or whatnot or however you have them uh, some people just put them on a bowl on their table but anyways um, <clears throat> And uh, if you uh, if you ever in question and stuff like that, you can get some water, um, and you you know you fill up the sink with water. You put the eggs in there, and if it floats, that means it's not good. If it if it sinks, it's good. So floaters you want to get rid of, sinkers you want to keep. You know what I mean? If you're gonna you know be cooking up those eggs. All right. <laughs> hopefully I'm not. Hopefully I think I got all the information correct. I mean I got the notes here, so I shouldn't get it wrong, right? But hey, I always tell everybody you know. Just because I say something on YouTube doesn't mean it's factual. Just you want to always do your own research and check these things out for yourself. But if you ask anybody in chat down below, they'll probably tell you mineral oil is a great technique uh, to preserve eggs. Uh, and, you know, these eggs can last quite some time. You'll be surprised, way over 30 days even, uh, by using this method. I've even heard some people uh, preserving eggs this way of up to six months. Uh, but like I said, you guys want to check that out yourself. Or if you have experience with this or use this method, please drop that down in the comments as well. All right, so number eight, my final one, and I know I'm probably missing one, but hey, it is what it is, right? Uh, I'm not going to start all over and try to find what happened, but we're just going to run with it. All right, so eight is larding. So larding is something really new to me. Uh, I came across it while reading this book, and I thought it was pretty intriguing, and the reason why is because I didn't know it existed, but uh, you know, I've seen it done before, but didn't know the actual term. So I don't know if you other folks out there have heard of larding. Uh, larding is a white fat produced from pigs. Uh, you can render lard uh, by boiling or steaming, uh, and when completed, it'll be tasteless, odorless, and contains no trans fats, uh, which I thought was really awesome. Uh, you can allow the lard to cool in a, a block shape and then wrap it up in food grade paper to store it. Now, uh, let's say you got some meat, right, and you want to use lard, uh, you know, larding this method. Uh, as, but basically, this kind of gives me an idea of how it works. Uh, you want to start by placing your meat in a crock pot. Uh, melt down a block of lard and cover the entire surface of the meat uh, with the resulting liquid. Allow everything to cool and the lard will harden against and create a protective barrier between the meat and the air. This effectively stops bacteria uh, from growing on the meat. Uh, and then proceed to store your uh, meat in a cool, dry location. Uh, and you'll be set up for roughly about six months. Six months. I thought that was pretty cool, uh, you know, thinking about that. I didn't know that that was an option down the road. And when I came across this, I wanted to share this so much with you guys. Uh, and maybe some of you guys are aware of this method as well. Uh, if you are, please let me know if you've used it and how well it works. 
Uh, you know what I mean? Just because I do the research doesn't mean that and I've, I've actually done it in practical application, which I plan to. I plan to do a lot of these things. And when I go over these uh, these lists, are these things that I am researching, these things that I am trying uh, and learning to do myself because I want to be as prepared as possible in every scenario, be it, you know, preserving food and, you know, using gear and certain types of techniques and stuff like that. And hopefully that's what you get out of videos like this is, you know, uh, you're 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 listening something and you hear something and all that that intrigues you uh, that's something that you might want to look into and hopefully I sparked some sort of interest and uh, in, in, in an idea within you that you want to uh, you know find ways to preserve food without refrigeration so if you got any value out of this video please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up it is always truly appreciated uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe as well like share and all that fun stuff like that help get this video and get this message out share with friends and family other than that, this is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the rebound. And as a matter of fact, I'll see you guys tomorrow night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then I'll see you on the rebound. This is Gray Man. You guys have a great day. God bless.